If you have a gas pool heater, you need to make sure you winterize it properly or it's almost certainly going to break uh, before the spring season. And the problem with that is it's the most expensive piece of equipment on your equipment pad and you definitely don't want to have to replace that every year. Um, in, order to, uh, in order to winterize it, there's actually not that much involved with it. Um, basically the first thing you do is there's an external gas valve somewhere on there, um, somewhere in the line that supplies the heater. There's a gas valve, close that. Uh, next, open the, the heater itself and right in the front there will be also a uh, gas valve in there that you turn and close. Uh, so now that's two, two, two forms of protection for turning the gas off just to make sure against maybe when you're shoveling your walk you accidentally bump the ball valve that's on the external uh, valve and you'd open the gas line again. Well that would be bad. Uh, so that's why there's two gas valves that you're going to turn off. While you've got the, the front side open and you're you're turning that gas valve off, which is either just a little, um, it turns or there's a little switch and it says on and off, but it should be fairly straightforward. While you're in there, you, you're going to want to disconnect the pressure switch as well. Uh, the pressure switch will be identifiable because it has a copper tubing about half the size of your baby finger that connects to both the top uh, and the bottom of it and or sorry just to the top of it and then the electrical connections to the bottom of it the and the it's a 7 16th connection and basically what that is is if you don't open that there's a, just a tiny amount of water that's stored inside there but it's going to break the pressure switch and those pressure switches uh, even though they're a tiny little thing your heater can't run without it and they could be a couple hundred dollars to replace that so you're going to want to take a good look around inside of there if you have one that's where it should be located um, there are a couple forms of heaters that uh, hide them up inside where if you have like an electrical connection There's a, a Hayward heater. I forget which version of it is But you open the front and then there's a panel that slides down and up inside there Sometimes you can find a, a pressure switch So basically just be thorough getting to know the the location of this on your unit But once you know where it is just make sure you open it every year and leave it open for the year um, and the just opening it isn't enough enough you do need to blow through the system but when you blow through the the rest of it to winterize the the head itself then that's going to be uh winterized and blown up during that process as long as you have it open already so you've turned off two gas valves you've opened the pressure switch uh, now what you need to consider are the drain cocks somewhere on this heater are going to be anywhere from one to three drain co cocks and that's a small um i think it's about a half inch or nine sixteenth um size thread uh, or size head on the bolt and uh, they, they're either brass or plastic and they thread into the sides uh, or sometimes underneath the, the manifold header. So those are the places that you want to look. Underneath the manifold header, look to see if you see any small uh, devices that are uh, screwed in place there, any drain cocks, you need to open those up. Um, if they're brass, don't use an adjustable wrench or channel locks or something like that. Find the right size combination wrench or socket and use that and it's probably going to be 9 16 in size. Um, because with the brass ones strip so easily and once they strip they're really hard to get out because the brass is going to be different than the material that um, it's threaded into so there's going to be some galvanic corrosion there and those two things have a tendency to get stuck together. Um, and further to that, when, when you remove uh, brass drain cocks, once you blow out the system, usually put them back in place for the winter. Uh, pretty much all other equipment, and especially anything plastic, you leave the, the drains and the plugs out for the winter. The one exception to that is heaters with brass drain cocks, because the uh, metal where that it threads into will corrode over the winter, and then in the spring you won't be able to get that threaded back in without having to use a thread chase of some kind or having a service call from a, a gas technician if that's not something you can do yourself. So to solve that problem, just make sure that you always have them uh, in place. You remove them for blowing out the system, but ultimately they will be stored loose fit in place for the winter season. Uh, so there's one or two up underside the, the header, uh, where basically where the water connects into the heater. Look up under there, there should be two. Um, and if there's not, then there will be uh, by basically on the side near to the top of the heater. You should find anywhere from one to three, but have a good look around. If you've got any little plastic caps, like some ray packs on the opposite side of where the water enters, there's a very discreet uh, plastic knockout cap. And if you take that, that out, you'll actually see that there's another drain cock that's, that's down inside there, and it's a little bit harder to get to. You probably need needle nose pliers to get to it. Um, but you, sh you don't want to forget about it because you could end up with some water trapped inside there which will freeze and damage your heater over the winter. So once you've uh, identified where all the drainage ports are, you are now able to blow through the system with a um, 
a shop vac or ideally a uh, blower specifically designed for the swimming pool and spa industry and you blow through for normally when you blow through equipment um, you just blow it through and the water has gone and that's it and you're done now move on to the next piece heaters are kind of the exception to that because you're go going to be blowing through and some of that's going to bleed out through the drain cock ports that are open some of it's going to go through to where the pressure switch is it, it's not just one line that blows out in a couple of seconds so what I like to do is I will set up my heater with every port open and blowing through it and I'll just let that run for five minutes while I walk away and I do something else and then even further than that I'll come back and I'll take my finger and I'll plug some of the drain ports one at a time or two at a time and just make sure that there's uh, if there's any water at all trapped in that system I'm gonna get it out during that process um, and so the drainage ports just put the uh, the plugs back in if you have the brass drain cocks sorry if you, with, if you have the plastic drain ports leave them out if you have brass drain cocks they have to go back in for the winter uh, but that's it that's all that's involved in uh, in uh, draining and winterizing your your gas heater is turning off the gas times two and then making sure you open all the drainage ports and blow through as well as opening the uh, pressure switch do all those things and you should be good to go in the springtime it is recommended that you have your heater serviced every spring. It's usually called a spring cleaning package or something like that. Um, it's just a regular heater maintenance to remove things like spider webs and leaves that could uh, obstruct some of the orifices and affect how well the, uh, the, the heater itself is able to operate at. Basically, it's going to have an impact on your efficiency level that your heater operates at. For the first few years, you don't have that spring cleaning. Your heater will operate less and less efficiently uh, until at some point it just won't operate at all, uh, making that service call necessary. And that's when your gas tech will probably remind you, hey, we should do this more often to prevent this from happening again and to maximize your heater and get the most efficiency out of it because of course it's incredibly expensive to heat swimming pools so you want to you definitely want your uh, your heater to last as long as possible and you want it to operate as efficiently as possible at all times and save as much money as possible